Well, good afternoon, everybody. Again, it's good to be here, as always. Um, I opened up my Bible to Psalm chapter 78. I just got out here five minutes ago. I was reading inside my house, and I read two or three verses. I come out here, and I read an additional verse that I didn't read in the house. If you have your Bible and would like to, Psalm 78. Now again, I'm not a history major of the Bible, but I do believe that the Word of God can talk to us today in 2021. Um, when you find scriptures like this, you have to sort of stop and think, could the Lord be talking to man today? I did a message not long ago about lip service and how that God looks at the heart. He examines the heart. And then I open my Bible tonight and I find this verse and I'm thinking, Lord, is that, was that not efficient in the message that I brought about lip service? And you know, it is what it is. Verse number 35 in Psalm 78 is where I am. Listen at verse 35. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. You know, there's a lot of people that if you was to go ask them, do you believe in God? They would go and say, oh, yeah, I believe in God. What's really somewhat amazing at times, though, is when you ask them, do they believe in Jesus Christ? And they have a little bit more trouble with letting it be declared and letting it be known. Most people will say they believe in God, but when you narrow, narrow them down to do they believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that's a little bit more direct. It makes it sound like you're I don't know, maybe like you're judging them. You're not judging them, but this verse here says, and they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. The high God. It talks about here, and they remembered that God was their rock. Well, the only way God is the rock of anybody is if salvation has come in. A person that never received salvation can't really say that in their own heart now that God is the rock. Now, we read over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4, I believe it is, that Jesus was the rock. Well, we know that because that's what the Bible verse says. But here it says they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Some people believe in the high God, but they still, from a scale of one to ten, do they, do they really believe in the high God, I'm talking about really believe with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their strength, with all their mind. It goes on in verse 36. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. How many people do you know today that flatter with their mouth. Again, it goes back to what I said about lip service. 
God looks at the heart. He doesn't look at just a flapping tongue. But see, it goes a little bit deeper here when you get into verse 36 right here. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. See, they used their mouth just like I'm using my mouth to talk into the camera. They used their mouth. But not only did they use their mouth, they lied unto him with their tongues. See, it takes my tongue to say words. I've noticed here lately that when I'm talking, sometimes my words don't come out the way I want them to. I don't know if there's a problem that I have. I really don't know if it's something that makes you slur your words. I don't know. But what I'm saying right here, it says, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. Now, don't you think God knows a liar when he sees one? When he hears one using their tongue, I'll just be honest with you. I'm just going to, that's the only way I know how to be. Today, I was wrestling with a chain on a mini bike, and that thing almost literally whipped me because my body doesn't function like it did five years ago. I get more aggravated. I don't have the tools. I don't have the strength in my arms. I don't have the right kind of tools to get things done. When I go and ask someone for help, basically all I hear is it'll be next week and then it'll be four weeks before I can get to you. Oh, just a little old chain on a mini bike you wouldn't think would really be all that big a deal, but when you get down on the ground, you can barely get up. I ended up wearing shoes, and I ended up falling, and I fell on some tools, and evidently it had fell enough to the point that the shoe had grabbed one of my toenails, and it had tore the toenail off. It don't hurt. It's not hurting right now. I put peroxide on it, and I bandaged it up. But you know what? It doesn't hurt. It didn't hurt when I took the toenail on off. But you know, it's it's sad when you don't have strength to be able to just do a little something. But I have to walk out here to this room, and I have to be careful where I walk. I have to watch out for where I walk. I have to look for danger spots and slick spots and things of that nature. The grass is real high outside. It's easy to trip if you're not careful. I'm saying this about myself. See, I used my tongue today to get agitated. But you know what? I stopped long enough to say, Lord, help me to get this chain on. Now, was it mandatory? Was it a spiritual thing that I needed to put the chain on the mini bike? No, it was just something that I wanted to get it fixed and get it pulled under the barn and say that it is now repaired. And I can still go back to using it if I want to. But you know, things of this life is going to tear you down. Even little things such as carnal things is going to make you say things with your tongue. It's going to cause you to fall down. It's going to cause you to knock a toenail off of your toe. It's going to cause problems. And sometimes you use your tongue to get you in trouble. 
And I literally remember stopping and saying, Lord, I need your help and enough strength to get this on. And you know, it was, it wasn't, I bet you it wasn't three minutes that things just sort of calmed down. I think that was before I fell. I had asked the Lord to just give me strength to get it on the machine. I had a heck of a time getting everything back together again, but I finally got it. See, you can use your tongue. I'm using my tongue today to talk to the camera, to talk to people out there that might be listening. Just because you bring the word of God doesn't mean that your tongue is going to be wholesome in everything that you say. So don't think for a moment that it's just about you that has that issue. It's me that has that issue. It's all of us that have the issue. What is it saying right here? Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. I wanted help, and the Lord gave me help. Thank, thank the Lord. But look at verse 37. For their heart was not right with him. Now this is talking about people that remembered that God was their rock. Does that mean that they lost their relationship with God? It could have been that they never really had a relationship in the first place. That's probably what it's refer re referencing to. They remembered that God was their rock with their mouth. And the high God, their redeemer, they, you know, you can think that you have the redeemer on the inside, but that's not necessarily so. It went on to say, nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. See, it's easy to use your mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. See, you can be sincere and sincerely wrong. And then in verse 37, for their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. What does that mean? The covenant of the promise. See, God gave a promise to his children, whoever would be his children. He gave a promise, and that's what that covenant is, for their heart was not right with him. I knew today, working on that aggravating mini bike, that my heart was aggravated. But you know what? What I was working on is repaired. It's fixed. For now, until something else tears up. For their heart was not right with him. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. How many people do you know that maybe might not be steadfast? And what I mean by that is, from a scale of 1 to 10, there's people that are steadfast about a 2 or a 3. But you know, I had to get so aggravated to wait until I got to about a 10 to ask him for help. And I think it was just nothing but God's mercy that interceded for me to have the help that I needed to be able to finish the operation and get it fixed. Did it have to be fixed today? No. Was it mandatory that I get it fixed today? No. Did I want to get it done because I believed I could do it? Yes. With a little bit of help from a friend 
that gave me the advice of what I needed to do. I was able to at least know what to ask for when I got down there to ask. See, God is good to give me the help that I needed. He talks about his covenant here. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. You know, I could have fought with that thing today and never mentioned the Lord. But I knew that what I was doing wasn't right by getting aggravated at something that I didn't need to get aggravated at. It was flesh. It was something that's going to be left behind if I died. But verse 38, listen to this verse. But he, being full of compassion. Now that's talking about the Lord now. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity. Even though I used my tongue today, that I didn't exalt the Lord all the time that I was using my tongue. But it says here, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Now, you know, the Lord doesn't get pleasure in destroying anything. But let me say this. In time to come, he is going to destroy. Now, see, God's a loving, merciful, graceful God today. And he very well could be a loving, graceful, merciful God tomorrow. But one day... His mercy is going to be done. It's like baking the cake in the oven. After it bakes and bakes and bakes and it gets where it rises, sooner or later the cake has to get done and you have to remove it from the oven. Right now, I believe this cake of the return of the Lord is so close that the Lord has literally got his mittens on his hands, fixing to open up the stove to drag the cake of the church out of the oven because it's done. The cake is finished, and the cake needs to be retrieved from the oven to take it to glory with him. And I believe that's really what he's saying right here. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away. Did he have a right to be angry with me today? Sure he did. You know, you don't have to curse to say words that doesn't honor God. I remember out there a few minutes ago just saying, God, God, you know, I was like, God help me, but I was almost in turmoil. Was that pleasing unto the Lord to even use the word God in that tone of voice? But notice what it says right here. He turned his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. Let me tell you something. The day is going to come that he is going to stir up his wrath. When he removes the church out of this life down here on earth, then the people of his child, his children, is going home. And that's really the bottom line. Now, some people is going to go and say, well, Ken, you took that whole four verses out of context. I'm just telling you what I got out of it. You get out what you want to get out of it. I got out of it well, how I felt like it spoke to me. The Bible talks about there is no private interpretation. Other people can get something totally different than what I got. But these words here spoke to me. And you know what? I don't believe it only speaks to me. I believe it speaks to other people too. I was getting off the ground 
today and I have a hard time getting up. After that accident, I'm afraid to move my leg very quickly because I don't want to snap anything that's inside them pins. I have to be very, very careful. I ended up falling on some tools that I had laying on the cement and it ended up making me fall on my foot. I had no idea that the toenail had come loose. I'm going to doctor it. I'm going to patch it up. And hopefully maybe it will begin to grow a new toenail. I don't know. But here's what I know. It don't hurt. It's not hurting right now. It might hurt tonight, but it's not hurting right now. But one of these days, the Lord is coming back to get his church out of the oven. And you got to ask yourself a question today. Are you in the oven of the Lord? If you're not, then you need to get in that oven of the Lord. He needs to consider you as one of his children. And if he don't know you as his child... If he happens to come back in the very near future, you could probably ask yourself a question. Are you going to go with him or are you going to stay behind? I made up my mind that I'm not going to stay behind. That mini bike can stay here. The golf cart can stay here. The truck can stay here. The other vehicle can stay here. Everything I got can stay here and fall down. But my soul has a covenant with the Lord. Elderly Ministry is the website. You're welcome to give me a buzz. The website is up and running. It's been changed. The, the lady did a wonderful job. I, I'd love for you to go there and just take a look. There's music there. Uh, Bible verses that are there. They are the ministry nuggets. There's over 635 videos that is online for you to see from every subject that you can think of. But you're welcome to go over there and take a look. Elderly Ministry is the website. You can also go to YouTube. This is the YouTube channel. You can go to YouTube and get my information. There's a phone number there that you can dial. I made sure she blowed it up big enough where you could see it. You're welcome to give me a call. Leave a message when you call, and I'll be glad to return your call, okay? Thank y'all for watching one more time.